Today we'll be doing a side-by-side -side shootout between Shimano's high and low end with the XTR9100 and the M540. In a world filled with $500 pedals and a company that charges $500 for a single DI2 lever, thankfully these top-of-the-line pedals are only $180. And these entry-level 540s retail for $80. So are the XTRs worth an extra $100? The fundamental difference between the XTR and every other model from Shimano is the smaller diameter spindle. This allows for reduced stack height. Their site lists the 2mm reduced stack on the XTR. Measuring the body height, I get a 4mm difference total. Since they are double sided, half that number matches the published specs. Does 2mm matter? That's up to you. But if you think stack height doesn't matter at all, then maybe you'd like to ride something like this. The XTR is also the only model in the lineup that you can buy with a 3mm shorter axle. The website shows that both pedals have the same center, and the shorter axle version will shift your cue factor in by 3mm. Eyeballing this, it's clear the center of the cleat mechanism is reduced on the XTR. There's little reason not to reduce your cue if you can. For those worried about crank rub, here's a shot of my setup. Yeah, it's tight. You can see I've got my cleats mounted fully outboard and could easily add 6 mil of space if I wanted to. Okay, you didn't think we were going to get through this without some weight weenie talk, did you? I get 311 grams for the XTRs compared to a stated 310 from the website. And the 540s are spot on with the specs at 352. Nice to see the stated numbers so close, especially on my cheapo kitchen scale. If we learn nothing else today, perhaps we learned we can trust the Shimano website. Looking at just single pedals, we get a 21 gram difference. Because I had them open to service, I was curious where the 20 grams were coming from. The reduced spindle size means less material in the spindle, but also the body can be smaller as well. The finishing on the spindle is much better on the XTR. I don't know if the material is any different. I was surprised that the collar and the other miscellaneous axle bits weren't heavier. I didn't bother weighing the bearings, but worth noting that the XTR uses two sets of 11 rather than two sets of 12 like the other models do. More on the bearings in a bit. Subjectively, the seal on the 540 is much more substantial. This should make it a better choice for riding in the wet, but at a cost of increased drag. The XTR seals are known to tear easily. Inside the collar of the 540 is a fixed nylon bushing. The XTR has this thin metal ring instead. I suspect these function as additional seals to protect the bearings. Here's a quick scan with a magnet, but no differences here. Looking more closely at the bearings, they check out as the same size, though as I mentioned, there are less on the XTR due to the spindle difference. So are a bunch of small gains worth the money? That's up to you, but to recap, the XTRs are $100 more, and with that you get a 2 mil reduced stack height, 3 mil reduced Q factor, assuming you buy the short axle model, increased lean angle, and very slight reduced chance of pedal strike, a 40-ish gram savings, and less robust seals for lower friction and drag, but at an increased need for regular maintenance. If you want to do this comparison for yourself, may I suggest this video to help you get all these parts back in the right place.